Hi and welcome to another episode of Hereford FC here on Vanilla FM and we are starting 2034-2035. Um, it's been a pretty good transfer window and I've got a lot to talk about and also catching up on some things that happened in the past that I haven't really been mentioning. Uh, so I'll, we'll do that while we play um, a game against Everton. But let's have a look at how the season has gone so far. So I scheduled a absolute gazillion of friendlies to get the guys up to speed and we managed to pull off a win and a draw so far in the league oh actually let's go back uh, to stages and last there we go here's the confirmation in the previous episode i mentioned we missed out on the european spots by you know a fine margin and there it is four goals and that was the difference between getting uh, to Europe and not. So we're going to try and do better this season. We're going to try and get this ninth, seven, uh, eighth, or th seventh place. Seventh is safer because it's almost guaranteed. Um, but yeah, uh, eighth and ninth can also get us to Europe. So we're going to try and do that. Uh, right. So. Let's go back on track. Finances, we're doing okay. We spent quite a lot of money on, um, uh, what we, uh, yeah, the transfers. Sorry, we're kind of trying to think through all the things I want to mention. So we spent quite a lot of money on transfers. So we didn't manage to build up as much profit as we have in previous years. If we take a quick look at the board and we look at ongoing. We have another stadium um, expansion um, in progress, so I mentioned that in the previous episode. No other changes to facilities or anything like that. I quickly updated all the staff and I hired a, um, a few more youth coaches because um, I wanted to make sure that they can do better this year. Uh, so I bolstered up the youth coaches a little bit. Um, the only thing actually I need to do is to go back and do the individual training for these guys. I haven't actually done that yet. But uh, let's go back to the squad. I'll take you through the um, the transfers that we did. Now, in goal, we still have the same two. Diego Zupo, who's developing quite well. And we also have Neil Nolan, who's currently injured. But he's sort of becoming a bit more prominent. Um, but we'll see how he goes actually once he comes back from injury but he is becoming a little bit more of the prominent goalkeeper in the team in the right side of defense i had a tough decision to make because we had a pretty good player already um where is he he's actually not left the club yet he's going to leave the club carlos uh sorry João carlos davic Oh, um, he's really good, but his tackling is not improving. In fact, his tackling is declining. So I decided to sell him on, making a little bit of a margin. So we sold, so we're selling him on for and one extra million back to Brazil, just because he didn't really pay off the gamble on him. He, he was really good. The physicals are really good, but he didn't really pay off. Um, so. Um, the other player we had last season was a low knee. Let's see if I can find him. Because there's a bit of a story about that, actually. Uh, where is he? Nikola Trailovic from Serbia. He was actually featured as the top... Oh, let me just remind myself. Is it the top 19th? Let's see if I can find my notes. From earlier today. Desktop... I always make a bunch of screenshots and save them on my desktop. I'm trying to, sh to find it now. Top 16. So he was number 16 in the Wo Wonder Kids uh, list of the world. So he was a really, really good, promising... Um, he still is, to be fair. He's only 19. He's got a lot of um, um, uh, potential. But yeah, so we got him on, on loan last season. I think Partizan's probably going to keep him on this season because he, he did well, quite well for us last season, only at 19. So that means we have two brand new uh, defenders, Malakai Field, and he is more impressive even than Nicola. So 
So that's going to be impressive to kind of follow him along. He's on loan uh, from Arsenal. And then the other player, a bit more mature, is Emmanuel Ayew. 33 years old Austrian. He's had a quite a good career starting in Austria, then moving to Italy for a brief spell. Um, one season in Birmingham on loan, Fiorentina in Italy, um, Inter Milan, Lazio, and now finishing, basically retiring with us. Um, so that was that was pretty good. Not for a lot of money either. So that was good. And then. In defense, we have a few no, few new players. Um, so we still have uh, Velo uh, Velinov, and he's he's petering out a little bit, it seems, but he's still very good. Been with us since the beginning, since we got to the Premier Division. And then the other player for the wide centre back position is Ibrahim Na, um, and he's a new gen from Cameroon, who's on loan uh, with us from Birmingham. Very, very good find from Birmingham. Then in the center back position, we have the same two as last year. So um, Aaron Cashin and also um, Ben Cabango. Ben is one of those players that we, we sort of need to replace, hopefully in January. But if not, then we'll, we'll do it next year for sure. He must be approaching retirement as well because he's 34. So he might force, be forced to um, uh, replace him anyway. And for a couple of years now running, we have the same two in the no-nonsense no nonsense centre-back position. Linda um, um, Dingy. He's been with us for ages since the championship. And he's doing quite well, developing really well, I'd say, for that position. And then the superstar for that position for us is uh, Hiroki Harada from Japan. And he's been with us for, uh, this is the third, third th season now. So we had the same two for for a while, which builds up cohesion. Especially because we have uh, Zahari, Velinov as well. And, um, you know, the other two as well, Ben and Aaron. So the, all of all of them will have played with each other for one or two seasons at least. Left side also in change with Matthew Anderson, who's going to stick with us for another season. And the other player in that position is Jesus Angulu, which I can't find right now. Where is he? Ah, there we go. Jesus Angulo from Mexico. He must be approaching retirement, surely. Um, not announced it yet, but surely he must be um, heading up to it. Then Pierre Cooper Miners in the defensive position. Uh, so that was really good that we could keep him. And then we brought in someone else to possibly retire with us as well. Boubacar Camara, a very, very good French player uh, who had been at Aston Villa all this time. He went to Saudi for a bit. I was surprised I was managed to snatch him back from Saudi for a million because usually once a player goes to Saudi, they go there to, to stay. But um, yeah, so started at OM in France and now with us. Uh, midfield, we sold Caput. And we he kept Josip. There, there were no offers for his release clause, so he's stayed with us. He said he was happy to stay with us if nobody could offer the release clause. So that was fine. And then we um, replaced Caput with someone with a bit more experience. Caput was declining a little bit anyway. And we went and... <coughs> excuse me. We got a little bit of a more experienced player. Um, Kovalenko from Armenia. And he's been a little bit everywhere. He's been in Russia. So he started off in Russia, apparently, in Zenit. And then moved to the Bundesliga for uh, Borussia Dortmund. Porto, um, we're already in the game for quite a lot of money. Wow. And then uh, Ajax for a year. And then Qatar for two years. And we bought him off Qatar. Um, Al Dulai. Uh, for the same amount of money they purchased them. So, so that's a good replacement. 
on, now the wings now the attacking wings I took a little bit of a gamble so we went and bought back if you'll remember this guy Alejandro Lorenzo we found him in Argentina so we were the first European team to go to Huracan and offer them a loan it was a cheap loan he came and we didn't manage to loan him back again so he played a couple of seasons in Huracan since then then Newcastle bought him and straight away loaned him to the championship to Huddersfield then we loaned him in again a couple of seasons ago and he pay, played the majority of the season then he went to Saudi for a two, two, for 3 million essentially so Newcastle managed to make a loss on him somehow which is ridiculous and we bought him for 27.5 million so he is a beast of a player for our club and um, but we had these other two players so we have Ben Hames in the right side of attack already so we don't really need Alejandro and Ben has been he's one of those that he's been in and out of our club as well but we bought him now so he's ours to keep and then we also have Stan uh, Weavers and he is a young player still developing still a lot to give and I didn't want to get rid of any of them because they're all very good in the meantime we had very very poor players on the left side one of them still with us um, Nathan Lamy uh, I don't know how he's still with us but he's still with us in fact I'm working on replacing him but anyway so I decided to take um, all of these so Ben and uh, uh, um, Ben Alejandro and where's the other guy Go on, Stan all of them all of the guys that play on the right I've asked them can you please train on the left so they're all training on the left and I've been playing Stan on the left a lot so he's already starting to develop a little bit on our left side and so is Ben but Ben is a bit further behind because I haven't actually played them on that side Alejandro I don't think he we will to be fair because I'm gonna play him on the right anyway because that's he's my favorite player for that position anyway so um, in the meantime, I'm hoping to replace uh, Nathan Lamy with a fairly cheap um, uh, Uruguayan player that I found. Not as good as the other guys, but he'll be a nice backup for that left side. And he actually plays on the left, so so that'll be alright. So I'm hoping that will go through. Um, and I'll, obviously I shall, I'll show him off in the next episode as well. In attack, we still have the same two. We have Emre Tezgel, who nearly got goal scorer of the season last season. Uh, so he's still with us. And then his um, uh, companion, I guess, the striker, who replaces him sometimes. Uh, Joel P Piro, Piru? I don't know how to pronounce that. Any Dutch people out there can, t can let me know. Uh, yeah, so he's just basically waiting out for retirement and he's all right if he comes on and he gets the ball in the right place if he shoots it'll be a pretty good shot so so he can stay so that's it so as far as transfers out um transfers out this season uh oh yeah this guy got poached uh bay sharon he's a youth player that's fine don't really mind him i managed to get um Ten and a half million for Seb Ferdinand. I don't know how. Also, I only got him for fairly cheap back in the day. So I was really pleased with that. Um, not so pleased with Riley Owen. I think he's going to go for quite cheap. And we actually paid. Oh no, he was free. Who am I thinking of then? Uh, is it this guy I'm thinking of? Maybe. Yeah, this guy, we lost some money on him, but he's old anyway, so so that's okay, I guess. Uh, Caput we sold. Um, we made a bit of a margin on him. Uh, we also... Uh, no, we just loaned out. Uh, so this guy, we only brought him up on to be a companion to Harada, because of his... Um, Japan, j j just to be a friend, so Harada could, could um, settle. So I went and got a Japanese player. Obviously, he wasn't playing, so he was getting a little bit upset. Um, so I decided to loan him out. And there we go. Uh, you'll see some of these BPR, bonus player reaction. 
it's because I decided to offer our players a big bonus at the end. So I've set the bonus to be the highest. Um, we had the finances for it, so I thought, why not give them an extra motivation for trying to get that European spot at the end of the season. So hopefully that will work. Um, we didn't make too much of a dent in our cohesion, so hopefully we can build that up through the season. In fact, I need to go back and look at these trainings schedule, the uh, training schedules, and schedule in some team bonding. So I normally do. Oops, why is it so slow? Uh, what I normally do is that I go through the whole calendar and put in community outreach and team bonding at the end of the week or somewhere in a week where it fits. And there we go. So I'll do that off, off the episode. Now, if we go and play this match against Everton, it's going to be a tough match. Everton are playing really well this season. So, and then I'll talk you through some of the other things that happened. in the past that I didn't get a chance to mention, but often when, when something cool happens or something that, you know, I want to mention, I take a screenshot of it so I can remind myself. So I'm going to go through those now. So first of my screenshots. Oh yeah. Um, I got two job offers that I obviously declined because my save is um, the Hereford save, but I got an offer from Arsenal and this is the second or third offer that I received from Arsenal. So Arsenal are really, really keen to employ me, um, but I obviously said no. Uh, the other offer was from Spain national team, and if you remember a while back I tried to, you know, manage the f French national team alongside Hereford, but I really couldn't be bothered, so I then resigned a week later. But uh, yeah, so I had offers now from Spain, France, and also Italy, and I've, I had to decline those because it's just not the kind of thing I want to do. But it's kind of cool that I'm getting those offers, though. I've already mentioned that uh, one of our players last year was the top 16 um, wonder kid. I have a feeling we'll have some more of those. And I think that's it, really. Uh, I think everything else I've already sort of covered anyway when I was showing off the players. Yeah, we had some signings of the season last season. Diogo Zupel, our goalkeeper, was one of them. And the other one was Stan Weaver, the guy that I'm trying to train on the left side of attack. Um, they were highlighted as signing of the seasons, um, with Diogo actually winning that award. So Diogo Zupel was awarded the um, signing of the season last year. He was also the young player of the season as well, which I was pretty chuffed for. So we are already 1-0 down. Which isn't um, amazing, I guess. But um, again, our goal this year is to just get onto those European places. Just not get too far behind. I always try to update my notes as the game is going. There you go, up to date. Yeah, so we are playing in Bristol again in this in the Bristol City. Our stadium is being upgraded to have just shy of 50,000 seats. That will still be the smallest stadium of the league, but I think enough now that we can get some decent amount of cash from it. I will always push for more. I think it's it's worth having, you know, the biggest stadium that m basically want to be selling it out. So there's not much point extending it f way too much beyond the amount that you s you consistently s selling out. But at the moment, I think fifteen thousand is quite feasible that we can sell that out to show. I've been um. It's been a while since I've been able to record two back-to-back -back videos, so uh, Monday's video... Well, it wasn't Monday, it's actually Thursday for me, but um, the video that you're watching, you wa that was released on Monday, I also recorded this morning. 
so I spent the day watching the Olympics and recording and getting ready to record on. It's been very hot heatwave in the um, UK, which is actually where I live. Um, uh, I don't live in Portugal anymore. But yeah, very, very hot across all of Europe. Very hot in Paris for the Olympics as well. So it's given me an excuse to stay indoors today a little bit and um, and try to get tubes out of the way. I have an idea to see how difficult I can be looking. Um, I know last year we had a, a whole block where we played back to back all of the big games and then and then again, kind of six or seven games before the end of the season, we had that again. But um, I haven't looked to see how the calendar failed this year. Okay, so hot so the computer is quite warm. So that's, I think that's why it is so laggy when I move the mouse. Also, my voice is not keeping up with you guys, so apologies. A bit croaky. Okay, I think the all subs. I tried to close some apps. See if that will help with the lag. To be fair, I don't really have anything open, hardly anything open. But I'll quit whatever it is hope open, whatever is open. Nice gold there. It's nice to be able to claw one back, isn't it? <laughs> oh, pause and sneeze. That's bad. <clears throat> <clears throat> see that big stand with all white shirts. With the um, hair of the hands. <laughs> now, I'm not sure if this retraining the guys on the right to play on the left is really going to work, but um, yeah, we'll see. I hope it doesn't harm Stan's development. It shouldn't, because it's, it's the same position. It's still a, a winger attack role. It's just he's going to be playing on the left, so running up the left. And shooting with his inside foot, because he's right-footed. He's right -footed, so Shooting and crossing with the right foot. So the crossing is probably going to have to be not really tight along the line, but more cut of like, trying to cut inside do it that way. Maybe uh, through like a vertical ball through the middle. Ooh, that's dangerous. Okay, so it looks like we're going to have a narrow loss here against Everton. First loss of the season. We are playing Leicester for the Carabao Cup, and I think that was that was not the draw that I wanted for the first match of the Carabao Cup. The Leicester is going to be very, very difficult to beat. In fact, if I pause the game slightly, 
There we go. And look at the league table. There we go. So where is Leicester at the moment? Oh wait, Leicester's not even in the top division? Oh, I thought they were. Oh, they might be not as difficult as I thought then. So that's... Let's have a look at where Leicester are. I thought Leicester would have been near the top. They're not even in the first division. In which case, it's not so bad news. Come on. So, if we look at... Uh, Esther. Ooh, they're trailing behind in the championship. Really? Oh, okay. History. So, yeah, they've been not doing too great. They've got relegated in 2030, 2031. They also got relegated in 2022 and that got promoted straight away. Okay. And then did okay, got up to seventh. That's a surprise for me. Right, so I'm gonna carry on and I'll catch up with you again after the winter transfers, uh, just to show you how the season's going. The hope is that we get through this quite quickly so I can get onto the European competitions and uh, yeah, we get to show that off in the game as well. Thanks so much for watching until the end and supporting the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.